Hey guys, it's Aaron. So we're on video five of our dynamic component playlist. Uh, this particular video is gonna build a very much on what we did last time. So if you did not watch the last video, you're gonna wanna jump back over there and take a look at how we did that. So it should be linked to down in the description down below. It should be the last one on the playlist. Uh, there's a couple ways to get to it, but you wanna watch that one first, otherwise you'll have a lot of questions about how this one works. So we're gonna jump in and we're gonna make a frame that not only we have controls to size the actual size of the frame, but change the material size as well. So I know this feels like it's kind of a small step compared to last time, but it's kind of essential in how different subcomponents inside a dynamic component interact with each other. We hard-coded some values last time that we're gonna actually change to uh, user-defined values, and it's kind of a big step. So I wanted to break this apart. Last one was 17 minutes almost, so you know we're getting quite a bit out of these videos each week. So, uh, so here we go. I'll hop right in. Follow along. All right. So this is what I've set up so far. I set this up beforehand. This is nothing we didn't do last time. Uh, the only big difference is that in this component, I create a new attribute called size. You can see it showed up over here. And I also, rather than creating my rails being the full size, I just created little cubes. These are just three inch by three inch by one inch cubes. Um, so I'm gonna set some default values so we can see everything change as we set it up. So I'm gonna tell it my height, I want to be 36 inches. I want my material size to be four inches. And I want my width to be 24 inches. So that's all gonna be set up now. As we assign those attributes, we'll see our dynamic component jump. So first thing is my frame again. This doesn't have to actually be a part of what you're doing. I like using some arbitrary geometry to set the overall size because it's easier for me to visualize. Uh, you could actually get rid of this and just set these values based on frame values rather than this value. That is perfectly acceptable. We'll actually look at that. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna set this initially just so we can see how things move around, but we'll actually link the values in the rails of, of this piece back up to the values coming out of the top uh, component. So I'm gonna come in here for frame size and I'm just gonna add two. That's my length X and my length Y. And those of course, just like last time, my X length is going to be equal to the width value. So I'm gonna click here, hit enter. I'm gonna grab all this, equal to my height, enter. I'm gonna turn my formulas back on so I can see that rather. Okay, so there we go. That's all perfect, love it. So I'm gonna start at the bottom with my rails. For my bottom, I'm gonna add a couple of things. One is going to be my Y position. I don't have to worry about, or I'm sorry, my X position because I want it to be pushed over here. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and add my X. And my, I'm gonna do this for all of them. I'll add X and Y. And then I'm gonna actually have to add my size X and Y as well. We'll start with locating it. Because this is the bottom one, it's always gonna be over here. So I'm gonna hard code this equal to zero, enter, and equal to zero. Uh, as a, just making sure, I try to make sure I don't have those gray values, which are the arbitrary numbers. When I'm done, I try to make sure everything's either hard-coded or set to a specific value. All right, now I'm gonna have two numbers here. My X length, this is my easy one, just like last time. This is gonna be equal to whatever my width is, and I'm gonna hit enter. And notice I set it to the frame width up here rather than the, the Y length of my frame size. So when I'm done, I could actually delete my frame size. It's like I said, it's just nice to have that as a background. My other value is my Y length. That's this direction. So what's that gonna be? That's gonna be equal to whatever my size value is. And I should see that jump to be a little bit bigger. All right, so there's my bottom piece. I'm gonna go ahead and throw my top in next because that's gonna be the next easiest one. So for top, I'm gonna add the same things. I'm gonna add my X. I'm gonna add my Y, I'm gonna add my X length, and I'm gonna add my Y length. All right, X is pretty easy. That's always gonna be equal to zero. Now my Y is gonna change depending on where my axis is. If I click in here, double click again, I can see I put my axes on the top, so I want that to line up right there. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell it that my y should be equal to, again, I'm going to come all the way up here to my height and hit enter. And that'll drop it right in there. And then I can actually copy values from the bottom because I want my x length to be equal to this. So I could actually come in here, grab all this, copy, double click here, command V to paste, same thing down, whoops. Okay, I just made a cardinal sin of dynamic components. After I paste the value, hit enter. So same thing down here. I'm going to grab my frame size, control C. Come up here. Oops. Ah, man. Copy this, control C. Click out of the frame. Control V and enter. I would say half the time I screw up real good on dynamic components is because I'm not paying attention. Anytime I'm in here, if I click on any of these fields, it means I'm trying to copy that into it. See that? So you do have to make sure you either escape to exit a field, click outside the field, or if you want to enter it, click enter. All right, so one of the things that people run into with component attributes is this ends up being too small. I run out of space. So it's real important that I only have open the values I need to see at a time. So as I'm doing these left and right pieces, I don't necessarily have to see the top or bottom. Um, frame size, I don't need it at all. So I'm going to collapse those. I'm going to do this left one. So I'm going to drop my left and I'm going to actually open my top and bottom for this one as I put this in. So I'm going to come in here, left, uh, what do I want to set? I want to, same thing, I'm going to set my X and Y location and my X, and I'm assuming all my Z is just the default. I could have added another value up here that was like frame depth or something like that, which I could tie to all my Z attributes, but I didn't do that in this one. In this one, everything's going to stay that same depth, but uh, vary based on material and frame size. All right, so first thing, position. How far over is it? This piece will always be up against the left side, so it will always be equal to zero. So I'm going to hard code equals zero, enter. And then where is it going to be? Well, it's not just going to be, I can't hard code this value because it's going to change. This is the origin. I want it to be right here. So I'm going to set that equal to whatever the Y length of the bottom piece is. Enter, and that's going to put it right here. Now, couldn't I have taken that and set it equal to this size right here? Yeah, in the end, I would have got the same value, but I just want to show you, you can length up to the parent and pull a value from there, or I could pull from uh, another member actually in this section. All right, continuing on, this, one's, this stuff's going to be pretty easy. My X length is going to be equal to my size, enter, and my overall length here is going to be equal to my height minus, and I can do this a couple different ways. I can say minus my size, minus my size, and hit enter. So essentially what I'm saying is take whatever my height is and subtract the frame size, and then subtract the frame size again, so one of the things I could put in here is just tell it to subtract the frame size twice. And I can do that by saying after the first minus, two asterisk frame size. And that will give me the same value. Oops. All right, one last piece to add here. And this is what I was talking about where I start to lose stuff. I do want to pull values from this piece right here as we push this up. So I'm going to go ahead and close my top and left. And then I'm going to say, add my X position, add my Y position. And then again, add my two lengths, X and Y. At this point, we're walking into uh, almost redundancy, but not quite. The important part here, again, is going to be where is my axis on my actual piece. If I click into it, my, my axis is on the right side. So I want to put that point right here at this end of this member. So I'm going to click out and I'm going to tell it, okay, my length x across, this should be equal to 
whatever the width of my entire frame is, enter. Whoops, I put that in the wrong spot. We'll set that back to three real quick. Let's try putting that where it's supposed to go. Equal to my width. I did say this before, but I want to I reiterate this. So much testing happens. Uh, I really oftentimes don't know exactly how I'm going to do something when I launch a new dynamic component, but it's really easy to test actively, especially when you have your component options open and your component on the screen because you can see where stuff happens. So if you do make a mistake like typing a value into the wrong spot, it should become apparent pretty quick. All right, so my Y, I'm going to set equal to whatever the frame size is on the bottom piece. And then my length, my X length is going to be equal to my frame size, enter. And then same thing here, same as we did on the other one, this is going to be equal to the height minus two asterisk frame size. And enter. Oops, I put two eight. Let's try putting an asterisk there. Oh man, I do, I, I hope you guys appreciate the mistakes I make so you can learn. There we go. So let's test that real quick by let's change some of these values. Let's take, take this down to 32 inches. Everything looks good. Let's make it wider. Let's make it 38 inches wide. Ooh, still looking good. And let's change the material size. Let's bump up to two inches. Nice, let's put a big eight inch. Oh yeah, that is one good looking frame. There you go. If you like that, please leave a like down below. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. That way you'll be notified when the next video comes out in this series. This is the fifth video in our dynamic component series, and I think we can keep going, don't you? If so, leave a comment down below. This whole video series is created based on comments and requests from viewers like you. We like making these videos a lot, but we like making them a lot more when they're showing something you want to see. Thank you.